What's up, listeners? It's your boy Darren Green back with another one of these episodes. It's the Wednesday show. Okay, look, I'm back on here. I'm just here to keep the momentum going. Okay, thank you so much for last episodes and episodes before that's uh, views. You guys are really showing up and showing out. So I'm happy to, you know, entertain you guys. And yeah, we got, we, I got some topics to get into, right? It's some topics where we, either already talked about on TikTok and I just want to get my shit off. And then there's some new topics that just literally just came up uh, today. <laughs> so it's going to be a pretty extensive show today. I hope I give you guys a good hour, but if I don't, it'll probably be a good little 30 minutes. You know, you know me, I like to get right into it. Um, but I will, I would like to say though, it, it it's crazy. Outside. Like if y'all are in the New York area, New York, New Jersey, PA, like it's real bad over here. <laughs> Like, when I tell y'all I had to literally, I had to wear a mask because I, I work today. So, and I'm just getting off. When I tell y'all I got outside, I was out of breath, child. I was like, what, what is this? This is not some, this is not air. Okay. I'm over here picking up particles. I'm like, uh-uh, no, I need to make sure I'm good. I went home, child, washed my face. Like, I did I did the whole nine. I had to freaking with, with quarantine or, or decontaminate. Because it's crazy, and it's real bad in New York, too. I heard I heard they said the smoke is so bad. Now, this is the, the smoke because there's a lot of fires going on in Canada, and it's, like, coming to our country. And it's so bad in New York that they said a person, like, just being outside for longer than, like, 10 minutes is, like, smoking six cigarettes. Like, it's real bad. Like, people going to have a lot of lung problems. And, and you know, Canada going to have to damn pay the price because what the hell? What, what's going on? All right. Tired of this. Tired of smelling. Everything smelling like smoke now. Chow. Oh, they killing us. Chow, they killing us. But let me not say that. Um, Let's get into these topics. You know, what I wanted to talk about today, you know, Nikki and M5 and how it's going to be another versus, Chow. Because, you know, every time the queen want to come out with a release date, it's always chitter chattering. It's always something going on. Somebody about to come out with another album too to like try to hour. I'm just like, I'm sick of y'all. So yeah, we're gonna be talking about that. B Simone gets dragged. Azalea Banks gets dragged for dragging DC Young Fly, who just lost his his. I mean, the per the mother of his children. Okay, but we'll get into it. I wanted to talk about the the um the whole Chica situation to get my last little final thoughts on that. Um, Wendy Williams' son speaking out and the manager responding. Uh, and then we'll close off with the, the little dress code thing at this damn dentist child. They got everybody in their fields. Everybody talking about it. Everybody saying, oh my goodness, is that in the third? Yeah. Don't wear no bonnets, guys. Bonnets are out. It's unprofessional. It's horrible. Don't do it, child. Anyway, let's get into these topics, though. Now, I wanted to start with talking about Nicki Minaj's NM5. NM5 was announced. It's, it's going to drop October 20th. I mean, I'm here for it. You know, she basically, she's just laid it out, said, put it on a suite. And we are going to wait until, you know, October 20th. Like, it's, it's I, I'm here for it. I'm, I'm definitely intrigued to see what type of music she's going to be dropping. Is it going to just be rap? Is it going to be a mixture of rap and maybe some R&B? Or we going to get some pop elements? I don't know. This is definitely something that I'm looking forward to. You know, I you know I was I was a beehive last year. I was all, you know, renaissance out. And we still renaissance out here in the summer because I'm about to go to the concert. Now we're going to be, I'm back to, back to my original factory settings, honey. I'm back being a barb again. Okay, so in October, we're just going to be, it's going to be Nikki. You know, and I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of talk going on. There's a lot of, you know, the standums on Twitter over here talking about some, oh, yeah, Nikki want to drop want to drop the release date when Cardi did, 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 did this and the third. Because apparently it's it's been rumored that Cardi is supposed to be dropping an album this year as well. You know, and, and, and a lot of people are... <sighs> Here's the thing. I, I get sick and tired of every time when Nikki drops something. And I'm not trying to just, you know point out Cardi B because it's probably Cardi B probably doesn't have that type of control over what she really does. Let's be very clear. It could be the team. It could be the label being shady. But like every time Nikki comes out with something, she's doing something, she's working with somebody, it's always some bull crap. No, and then and then they and then it's so it's so crazy that and, and I'm really talking to the stands right now 
that they're like, oh my goodness, because because Cardi did the Summer Jam thing. Now Nikki want to come out with a with a with her release date to try to change the subject or change the narrative. Now, ain't nobody trying to do nothing. I'm dropping my album. It has nothing to do with this girl. And she can drop her album whenever she wants. But I'm going to tell you right now, it's given very much. She was waiting for her to drop the release date so you can figure out when you're going to drop yours. Like, it just looked like that. And now it's, it's just becoming like, oh, like y'all want to, y'all want to battle with the numbers. How, let me tell you something. However the numbers are going to pan out, it is what it is. Whoever uh, it sells the most, because I guess that's what they really want. That's what that's what the, the industry they want to see. Oh yeah, who's going? Who's going? Who's going to come out on top? It's going to be Cardi's new album. Or it's going to be Nicki's new album. I'm gonna tell you right now. Uh, <laughs> and I'm not and I'm not saying Cardi will outsell Nicki. All I'm saying is, it girl, as long as you've been waiting to to really drop some new content, really, Cardi, you better it better be better than before. And you're going up against other rappers and other people. I'm not sure if there's any other female rappers that are coming out with albums, but you know, if you are gonna drop when Nikki drops, you just better you better make sure your shit is clean because just because just because some technicalities happen with Queen does not mean that this album like I feel like this time Nikki is really doing the due diligence. I think this rollout, I'm I'm sending positivity, okay? Being that she told us four months in advance now. Here's the thing, and I don't want y'all to get scared or anything like that. I have a feeling that it might get pushed back. I'm I'm happy that she was able to give us like an actual date, but I just have a feeling that it might get pushed back. It's depending on what these other girls going to be doing, right? Me personally, being that she, you know, just came out and said this is when it's coming out. Like we had an exact date. I don't think we had that with Queen. I think she just said... I'm dropping Queen in about in, in real soon. This, that, and the third. The album is called Queen. And later on, we've got an initial date and then we got another date. So being that she gave us the date first before the name, it kind of gives us an idea that, okay, this might be official. This might be, you know, the real deal. Other blogs are talking about it. Other platforms are, you know, speaking about it. And you know, Billboard talked about it. So this must be confirmed. Like this is this is locked in. So I don't know. I just have a feel. I have a feeling. I, it, it, you know, I'm not trying to be negative, but it's just it might it, it might get pushed back. I have a feeling, but um, so far I feel like this rollout is even though we don't have much, we don't have any singles that dropped, and I'm pretty sure singles will start to come out in the foreseeable future in the foreseeable months. Um, but I don't know, child. I think I think something about this rollout seems like it's gonna be. Something to something worthwhile, and I can't wait to see what music she has now. They've been teasing a couple of Nikki stuff around town. I've been hearing a little something, something. I'm not sure. You know, they love to leak Nikki stuff. I don't know who's the child that team. She got she got to have everybody sign contracts. Like, look, let me tell you something. If I find out you've been leaking my shit, okay, we we done. <laughs> I'm happy for her. Like, yeah, she is. It's it's been five years. It has literally been five years since we got her last album. So, and I know that Queen, even though I did love Queen, like I, a lot of people will sit there and say, oh, Darren, you just don't like Queen. You, I prefer her pop. I prefer Roman Reloaded. Like I prefer like, you know, her older stuff. I didn't dislike Queen. It's just Queen just had like a messy rollout and it kind of a lot of politics got in the way of um, Queen being what it needed to be, to be honest. And I'm just and this is my honest truth. I don't have no problem with Queen. It's just the rollout. I really didn't like that rollout. And then the drama behind it, it kind of took away from the actual album, you know. So I think that Nikki is definitely going to she understands that, OK, it ain't going to be like that. It's gonna be different. I'm here for it. So tell me what y'all think about it in the comments, child. You know I want. You know I want to talk about it for a little bit. Now let's get into some drama. Let's get into some drama. Well, I mean this is this is not drama. This is more like nasty. This is this is some low budget, bottom feeder, gutter type. Like, and I'm being honest. I'm being real honest. This is this is not nice. This is not cute. So, be Simone. 
We talked about her before. We talked about how she was selling them damn coloring books. We talked about how she was scamming people into into buying into her little close friends thing. You got to subscribe to be a close friend or whatever the case is. I'm just like, girl. So I didn't know that B. Simone and Jackie O, as y'all know, Jackie O passed away because she got um, she she went in for surgery for a mommy makeover and unfortunately passed away. Didn't know that these two were friends, didn't really care because I don't really, I don't check up on B. Simone like that. I, I, the less I hear of her, the better. But unfortunately, we got to talk about it, right? Um, She basically is grieving for her friend, of course, as she should be. But in order to see the grieving, we have to become or join her close friends list. So she made this Insta story saying that if you're not on my close friends, you're not going to see much of my life during this time. Close friends, I love you. Thanks for being a safe space. So she's going to be, you know, I guess whatever she's doing on there, because I'm certainly ain't subscribing. But she's basically going to tell like how she's been feeling or how she's been doing or whatever the case is, you know, during her friends, you know, her untimely death. You know, I people act funny around death. Like, people act funny. I done seen it in families. I've seen it with friends, especially in families when we're talking about, like, who going to get the money, who going to get this, and how we going to divvy that out. Like, in, 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 some, in some cases, friends also as well, you are literally capitalizing off of your friend's death. That's that's some that's weird behavior. But this is this is exactly what she does. Like she did this. She didn't not to the magnitude. She hasn't done nothing to the magnitude of this because this is this is low barrel. This is this is some low hanging fruit type shit. I mean, she may have sell, sold y'all them little comic books or them coloring books to trying to t- tell y'all how to be entrepreneurs. I mean, hey, look at who hasn't who hasn't done that at that point, right? But for you to sit there and hide your grief behind a paywall just so you can capitalize off of you grieving, I mean, capitalizing really off your friend. I mean, that's just so inconsiderate. That's an inconsiderate to the family. You know, F the fans. You know what I'm saying? Who cares about the general public? But like the family, like if that were me, if that were like a friend of mine, if, if a family member of mine passed away and her friend, like if my cousin, like, okay, so if my cousin, because I, I, I got an example, my cousin got a best friend. If she passes away and then her friend, her best friend talking about some, oh my goodness, like see how I'm doing on my in my close friends list. You got to be in my close friends list it's under a paywall. Like, girl, I'm like, girl, what the hell? I'm, I'll be having several conversations with her. Like, uh, uh, don't use my cousin to get paid. It's weird. Let me see what this article has to say, though. Uh, last night, B. Simone took the Instagram story to let her fans know that she won't be posting much of her main account during this difficult time. But if you want to see her, you can subscribe to our close friends list for $10 a month. Though this is a subscription service that B. Simone has offered for some time, fans feel as though this is not appropriate moment to advertise the service during such a sad situation. I mean, obviously, let's look at some of these comments, though. B. Simone telling people to pay for her close friends access during this time is really tasteless, tasteless. I mean, at that, at best. B. Simone on IG pimping her grieving journey for $9.99. I mean, literally, she pimping out her friend, child. She is pimping out her friend for $9.99, $10. Makes no sense. B. Simone different. First, it was the manifestation classes. Now it's paid to be in my IG close friends as I grieve the loss of my good friend. Oh, no, nah, girl. No. And, and let me tell you something. And, and my listeners, let me tell you something. If I ever do some shit like that, look, unsubscribe to me. Like, I, I, you, y'all, I need to feel that, you know, that I need to understand what I did was wrong. Check me in the comments, but I don't see myself ever doing that type of shit. I would never do that. But like, this is like, this is what these influencers be doing. This is what these people that are like, oh, manifestation guru and classes and how to become an entrepreneur and how to make this and how to do that. Like they literally capitalize off of everything they do to the point where it becomes tasteless. It becomes everything that you do, everything, every friendship that you have is is like monetary. 
Like it, it, it has to benefit you monetarily, or if, if that makes any sense. All right, let's continue. B. Simone weird as hell for trying to get y'all to buy her close friends membership so y'all can watch her grieve. Basically, I mean, it's just weird. Some people were saying that well, why you got why you want to see her grieve? Like what? Would, like I don't think nobody cared I, for the life of me. Did not know that they were friends. Did not know that they were close. I, you know, maybe y'all do because y'all know of their relationship. I didn't I didn't really know Jackie O that much. I knew that she was a girl on Wild and Out and she was with DC Young Fly. Um, but I didn't know that they were friends. B. Simone been on the show. So I guess she's probably friends with a lot of them. Did not care to know her grieving. But for her to sit there and just be like, oh yeah, well, you gotta be in my close friends to see. It's just weird. I mean, is the proceeds going to the funeral? You know, is is some of that going to go to the family? I mean, that would have been that would have saved this. You know, that would that would have definitely been like, oh, okay, well, you know, she's doing something. Okay, I got, it. yeah, you, you know what, you got that one. You 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 eat a lot, but you got you got that little one. <laughs> just a mess. Anyway, so they dragged her for it. They're dragging her you know, on social media. It's a lot. But let me tell you, speaking of the situation with the whole Jackie O situation, child, not they dragging Azalea Banks too. Azalea Banks is getting dragged. Okay. She is getting dragged. She's getting dragged because of these damn Insta stories. She always go on Insta story and she just be saying the most God awful things. Like, okay, let me read this. So she came out with this, right? She said, DC Young Fly spent years discussing his own deep-rooted hatred of self as jokes pointed at women's beauty, projecting his own feelings about his own ugliness onto women perfectly secured in their skin. Say what you want about my tears. They were pure tears of rage and not at all a sign of weakness because at the end, I won. I'm happy. I cried and moved on. That Jackie O girl must have been so deeply insecure about herself. Now see, mm. And the nerve of DC to call such a gorgeous woman as Azalea Banks ugly on national television while a bunch of black people laughed. And ironically, dead at 32, exactly on my 32nd birthday, May 31st, 2023 in Miami. You N-words are going to learn to stop effing with me. Now she put roots on the girl. Because that's that's what it's giving. That's what you try. Are you just, okay? <laughs> she goes on to say, I don't think anyone gets how much the press from the episode derailed the success of Anna Wintour. I came to sing my song and go home and only at the request of my label. Then this stupid blank queens on stage behind me basically making a mockery of it being a gay song, fake voguing behind me in their do-rag like, they are all raging homosexuals. Child, we done got to we done got to the homosexuals. Child. You know when Isaiah gets to that point, she about to say some real god awful stuff. This is bad. I mean, it's give, not kicking the mighty down. One. And two, somebody died, Azalea. You over here saying, oh my goodness, what a coincidence. Like she died at 32 and it's my 32nd birthday. Like, girl, that's some weird ass shit to say. That is some weird, but but this is Azalea. This is what she does, right? It just and and then for you, you still not over what was said to you. Okay, your ass got bullied on the damn set of Wildin' Out. It was Wildin' Out. That's what they do. They crack jokes on each other. It, it's not it, it's not for the faintest. Okay, you got your feelings hurt, and you really and it did not derail Anna Wintour. Let's be very clear because. It was going to do what it was going to do anyway because of your mouth, because of your personality, your shitty ass personality is was is the reason why your projects get held back. Let's be very clear. You have a cult following. I will say and there's some songs on it. I really get into is that yet. But it's when you do shit like this, exactly like this, you will never get another deal again. You will never people. You will never get people coming on to TV premieres or whatever the case is. You're not even doing nothing right now, really. Cause you're just you're you're, it's it's giving bitterness. Like it's it's bit you're bitter that your career did not take off the way that you wanted it to take off. But also you have to understand your part in it. You're basically gloating that this girl died and that the girl was insecure and this that and the third. Now I didn't hear about like this is the first time I'm reading this. 
and really reading what she had to say because I was trying to, you know me, I'm always on the fence and I always try to see people's plights with certain topics and stuff like that. But girl, you literally, I I thought the way this was going to go was going to be like, oh, well, you're kind of accusing DC Young Fly of maybe perpetuating some type of stereotype or maybe putting something on to Jackie O to make her want to get this surgery. No, you just literally said, oh, no, y'all came for me and that and, and, and karma got to you. I mean, because even if that was the case, if that if you wanted to say, oh, DC Young Fly probably made her get the surgery or some or or somewhere down the line because of his rhetoric and what he how he um, objectifies women could have caused her to get this hastily uh, procedure done. Even if that was the case, girl, it's none of your business. It's not your place to say that. It's just, it's I don't know, Zay. That that's not. I mean, and she be she been having some real good points lately. But this one ain't hit. It, it, it didn't hit like you thought it was going to hit. And girl, it's just, it, it, you look sad. You look bitter. And nobody is going to mess with you. Like, like you literally gloated that somebody died. Like, who does that? Almost makes me think that you done put roots on the thing. Oh, child, let me stop. Let me not make that accusation. I ain't trying to get sued, okay? But it's looking very much like, yeah, I put roots on them and it finally came through and it worked. <laughs> child have some goddamn empathy don't nobody got empathy in this world and this is why we are dealing with the stuff that we're dealing with honestly no goddamn empathy so the whole chica situation i talked about it on tiktok but it but and then i put it in uh the youtube reels it didn't really get much traction so i'm gonna talk about it on here okay i don't care what you gotta say now one of the weekend's most viral conversations involved uh, children on an airplane And the rapper Chica sparked the talk after an online rant about a fussing toddler. The toddler was crying, okay? And Chica basically ranted and raved on Twitter. And she got called out for it. Come to find out, it happened to be Tiny's daughter's kids. So it was her grandkids. And, I mean, this girl was calling the mother a bastard and calling her the B word and almost like really coming for the kids. Like it was, it was bad. I mean, it was real. Like I, when I seen that, I was like, girl, first of all, she, you always saying something you just always, and then, and then be wanting to get mad and upset and sad when they want to fat shame you. And I'm look, I'm the, like I said before, you know, I don't think fat shaming is the way to go. And, and you know, there was a lot of people that was coming for her weight and all that and in the comments and stuff like that. But look, at the end of the day, like, if you poke the bear, I mean, it just is what it is. You know, me, I, I get up here, I, I, ha- I have that understanding that I may talk about some topics and some of y'all may not like it. And, you know, y'all see that I'm kind of plus size. So, you know, y'all want to put whatever y'all want in the comments, whatever. I'll go back and forth with y'all too. But... You know, it's just it's just weirdo behavior that you're like coming for kids like kids. And and we all know that kids are annoying as hell on a plane. Let's be very clear. Um, It's how you vocalize it. It's it's, it's really how you vocalize it. Like you should if you were really going through going through a manic episode because these kids were crying, you could have wrote that down somewhere in like put it in a diary, put it somewhere where nobody can see it. That That's, that's, you said the quiet parts out loud and, and you shouldn't have done it. And I didn't like how her response, her initial response was when she was on her little Insta story talking about some, oh, well, I had to do it because if I didn't rant and rave, I would have had a manic episode and I probably would have jumped off a building. At this point, I was talking to my best friend about this. At this point, she, <laughs> my best friend was like, girl, at this point, you better do a flip. Look, because Anna, look, you're weaponizing mental health. And this is the second time you did that shit, okay? You you did it when the barbs is coming for you. You came for Nikki. The barbs came for you. And they, and they doxed you. I, I don't believe in doxing. I don't believe in, you know, bullying in that way of, you know, I, I make a statement. We have, you know, a debate about something. And then you start coming from what that's not a problem. But it's habitual with you. You came for Nikki multiple times. You have your takes and you say certain things. I remember there was a tweet that they looked up back in the day of you comparing a little girl to a skeleton. I mean, you be saying fuck shit. I'm just, I'm keeping it a stack with you. So when you 
do the fuckery, you get what you get. You're weaponizing your mental health, and it's and it's for attention. Cause cause people that's really manic like that, people that's really suicidal like that, are not talking about I'm about to jump off a building because X, Y, and Z and y'all, y'all coming for me. And if I don't do girl, you're weaponizing it. We all have intrusive thoughts. Go see somebody. You have the resources to actually talk to a therapist. But you have the resources probably to have a session with Ayanla. Okay, and I'm always bringing up Ayanla because I've look. Let me tell you something. If I had, if I had the money, child, I would. De- Ayanla, you need to talk to me. I, I need you to. I don't care. We, we, you got to talk to me. But journal those things. Journal it. You know, there's, there's times where I think we all. I mean, I, well, I can only speak for myself, but there's times where I have some intrusive thoughts because something is happening and it's kind of irrational, and you don't want to say it out loud because it's irrational. Write the shit down. When you write it down, it goes away. It's no different than tweeting. That's what a lot of people have issues with. They got issues with keeping their shit to themselves. This is some high school shit. Yeah, I, I remember I used to do it back in the day. Maybe if you look at my old Twitter tweets or my old Facebook tweets, you'll find some stuff that I done said I got mad at when I was in school or whatever the case is. But when you are an adult, you learn to... to handle your petty drama or or things that are not like girl these are kids that's weird i mean i think kids are off limits and yes you have freedom of speech but that does not absolve you from consequences okay and the harris is lighting your ass up <laughs> the zonique was or however you pronounce that girl name her baby father like where your daddy at like <laughs> Now he's trying to fight. It's it's you know, you, you you can't come from you can't come from nobody's kids. Come on. And I spoke to a lot of people that have kids and they're, you know, it's a, it's offensive to them because it's like, you know, yes, of course, nobody wants to hear a screaming child in a plane. But what do you want me to do? Like there's there's nothing a, a, that child is screaming and crying because the ears are probably popping. They probably hungry and they can't really get fed properly or they can't do something because the Wi-Fi, you really ain't got no Wi-Fi on the plane. Like, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of things. There's a lot of reasons why kids cry on the plane, you know? So of course, everyone has those thoughts of like, Oh my God, like, uh, can these kids shut up? But like, it's like I said, when you vocalize them, when you actually tweet it, and watch your surroundings too, girl. You, you over here tweeting. You didn't even know that this was from a, a another celebrity had been in the damn plane and they done found out you was talking about their kids. Like, girl. Anyway, we got a couple more topics to get into. Now, I want to talk about Wendy Williams' son, child. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because this is, this is something that I feel bad. I feel bad for the family that's involved in this situation. I feel bad for her child, Wendy Williams' child. So basically, during an exclusive interview with the son, uh, Kevin, which is Wendy's child, allegedly alleged that instead of his mom's team helping her while she battles alcoholism, they have been taking advantage of her. He said, in quotes, I know there are all sorts of things happening that I know in my right mind she would never agree to. He explained, as hard as it is seeing her being taken advantage of, I know that if I, I'm i making sure she, as a person, is okay, that is the important thing. So this this child is concerned about her mom. And this, this is where I talked about earlier. Uh, people, be, people be acting funny around people that are dead or people that are kind of unable to really take care of themselves. Kevin still holds out hope that eventually his mother will realize that what's going on. Eventually she's going to realize uh, the craziness that's been going on. Kevin confirmed that Wendy was hospitalized last month. He says that he's learned the news from Wendy's jeweler who he says hasn't contacted him in months. The jeweler. How the hell? See, this? see, and I, this is my first time reading it. <laughs> the jeweler. I mean, this is this is this is what I'm talking about. Like when people, especially when you're famous, and people know that you're unstable, 
your team, that's what you got to watch out for. Because they will sit there. They're probably, and she got, and she, that whole situation with the Wells Fargo Bank. Child, I'm not going to say too much. But all I know is they probably running her, they probably pocketing her, her funds if they're on the joint account or if they're on uh, on her account, you know, it's just, it's bad. It's real bad. And yeah, the people, I, I believe, I believe 100% that they are using her. It don't make any sense how she be going, like they be seeing this girl outside, just acting just any kind of way. It's a real yellow outside. I'm, if y'all, <laughs> I'm for my uh, audio listeners, I'm looking at my window. It's getting real yellow outside, child. It's girl. Anyway, but it's sad. And, and, and like, you, you don't want to, this is something you don't want to see happen to your, your parent, you know, somebody that you're close to. Um, but Wendy is just not, I, I fear that she's not going to, you know, he has high hopes that Wendy will pull out of this and be like, you know, I don't want to mess with y'all. But by that time, it might be too late. They probably done cleared her account. And money don't mean nothing. But at the end of the day, he need to get his, he need to get his, his trust. Okay, let's be very clear. And if they messing up, if they doing something with her money, it, it don't make any sense how the jeweler is letting him know months later of her statuses with how she, like she was hospitalized. She could have died, literally. Ugh. Well, anyway, the manager responded, okay, so basically, he says, Wendy is under a guardianship. Everything that she does gets approved by this guardianship. A court appointed the guardianship. So now no one, even if they wanted to take advantage of her, everything has to get approved by the court. He appointed out. So any type of business dealings that we do, Wendy, myself, and anyone, we have to get the guardianship to sign off on it. So how can anyone take advantage of her? So he's he's making that statement. I mean, he's been talking. I mean, look here. Look, that's what he's saying. It's his word against the sons at this point. So I I, I want to see some receipts. I want to see some documentation that the the court actually uh, approves things. Let's be very clear. So I don't I don't believe that um, this child is not seeing his mom. You know, I don't know. I, f- I feel really bad. And a lot of people say you shouldn't feel bad because this is what Wendy get because all this stuff that she used to talk about. Oh, girl, shut up. You know, it. I still feel bad. You know, and I feel b- not just for Wendy, but just for the kids and her family. Like her family is like really concerned and like they're using her. I don't care. I don't care how you dice it, how you slice it. They are using Wendy. We hear them talk about that. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna start this podcast. We're gonna start this podcast, girl. Ain't in no standing to talk about anything at this point. We've been seeing those videos of her of people catching her on the street, and girl, she just be saying anything to come to mind. At this point, I'm girl. <sighs> child, pray for Wendy, child. Anyway, I want to get into my last topic. I did want to talk about this whole no bonnets, no house shoes, no pajama bottoms. <laughs> so a black owned dentist uh, has set some rules for an acceptable attire in her establishment, sparking outrage online. The there was a at the place there was a sign that said no bonnets, no house shoes, no pajamas. Um and this was talked about on Twitter a lot. This was talked about on Twitter and on TikTok a lot. A lot of Twitter users argue that the rules are anti-black, racist, and classist, while others respect the dentist's effort to protect their business. Uh, in quote, somebody said, when y'all claim signs like this are anti-black, it's a reflection of what you think black people are. So that's like some of the people that are kind of like arguing for this person's um this establishment's requirements okay um <sighs> we had the same conversation every couple of months every couple of years i blame monique monique you started this whole situation with this whole bonding situation like cuz my thing is this all right 
you can have your business however you want. You have the freedom of association and who you want in your establishment. It's going to limit people. You're limiting your uh, target people that your demographic. That, but you probably don't even want those people anyway because they ain't got the money. Right. You want them to get the services and stuff like that. You know, they're they're real expensive, like old teeth whitening or all this other stuff. Like, let's be very clear. Um, girl, I want to I would want to know why can't I have no damn pajama bottoms or so or house shoes? Is it affecting anything that we got going on with these dental appointments? I don't think so. I've seen people in scrubs. I've well, people work in scrubs at the dinner place. But I've seen people go to the doctor's office with their bonnets, with their with their pajamas now. Me personally, I'm I wouldn't say I'm a person to walk out the house with pajama bottoms on. I hate pajamas. I don't wear pajamas. Okay, do with that information what y'all will. Um uh, <laughs> I don't wear I don't even wear sweats outside, right? Not just and this is not me judging the next person that does. Like some people wear like people who love wearing like the slides with the socks in their in their um sweats and then they'll have like a do rag dudes will have a do rag the girl will have like a protective headgear or bonnet or whatever if it's affecting like the procedures like you can't put on like you know the things that you got to put on at the dentist or you can't really get into somebody's mouth I, I don't see how it affects it but that should be the only reason why you prohibiting this shit because this doesn't make any sense like this is not going I'm not going to no club I'm not going to nobody restaurant this is not no high profile event I'm getting my teeth checked it doesn't make any sense. It is classes. It is a little bit of what I okay. So I'm not gonna say anti-black only because black people are not the only people that dress like that. That will dress however they dress. Like we've seen, I've seen so many white people in pajamas and messy buns and and just like not looking presentable or just look like they're like you know they 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 look regular. I don't know what you want to call it. Um, but they just, they don't be wearing, they don't be dressing up. I don't know one thing. I ain't dressing up to go to no dinner. I ain't never dressed up. I'm a casual person. So most you'll get from me, I'll wear some jeans and sneakers and a shirt. Or if it's cold, I'll get a hoodie. But if a person want to wear a bonnet or if a person want to wear some pajamas, even though I, I, me personally, I think it's, you know, I don't want to wear it. I'm not judging the next person that wants to do it. Um, it is a little classist and elitist because it comes off like, oh my goodness, like, you know, we we, we don't do that here. We're we're we're, we're uppity. Um, I would say the same thing to a white owned business. It's not it has nothing to do with a uh, it being black owned. Let me see what the notes I had on here. There was a lady that posted on TikTok that got real viral too, and she added to the discourse, which basically encapsulated my issue with the discourse. Honestly, so I'm gonna let that play out. So a black owned dental office had a sign posted that said, no house shoes, no pajamas, no bonnets, right? And social media was so up in arms that they tried to destroy this woman's business by leaving her bad reviews, saying that the sign was anti-black. I just want to know why everything negative and uncouth has to be labeled black culture. I also want to know why advocating for us to go in public looking like we care about ourselves and how we look is deemed as respectability politics. We should not be condoning and advocating for clear signs of depression because the only times I've ever been raggedy in public is when something was off with me mentally. Rolling out of bed in the morning and going in public with a bonnet and pajamas on and house shoes is unacceptable, uncouth behavior, no matter what race of people does it. And going out in public looking well put together like I care about myself doesn't mean that I'm trying to be like white people or I'm trying to get white people to respect me. Maybe it's because I respect me. Let's make having self-respect a part of black culture. My thing is this, right? There is a, there's def, I do believe that there's a time and a place to dress. Okay. Doesn't make any sense that you're going to an interview and you got a bonnet on, you got pajamas on, you go into a high profile restaurant, you just go into just a high profile event, networking, whatever the case is. Got you. I got you. What the hell are you wearing? Why are we, why are you dressed like this? If I'm going to a, it depends on where you're going. If I'm going to a grocery store, now I may still kind of dress casual, like, you know, jeans. I'm at a grocery store, obviously. Um, I'll be seeing people in their bonnets at, at, at stores. Like, I don't know. Like, I, I just think that it's so weird how we, and it's just, it's always us. We're so policed and we're so like, 
it's this unrealistic expectation that we have to look 100% all the time. You know, in the whole comment of like, wow, every negative uh, negative thing is always labeled black. Coat. That's not the truth. That's that's not the truth. I mean, I is wearing a bonnet and, and dressing in pajama, pajamas negative? I mean, is it ghetto? Is it whatever? I don't. I mean, look, it's, it, here's the thing. Like I said, me personally, I wouldn't do it. But I'm not judging nobody else for doing it. I think that we judge a lot in this community and everybody should have the freedom to present however they want to present in the world. That is true freedom. To be able to be, I want to dress like this today. I want to wear this. I don't want to wear that. Because I'm a type of person, because in... What, where's where's the end game with that? Like like this is a slippery slope because then it'll be like, oh well, I feel like people shouldn't be casual. Now I'm a casual bitch. Okay, I'm always dressing in jeans and a regular shirt, and if it's cold outside, I'm wearing a hoodie. Like I'm not dressing up just to go out to the goddamn store. Okay, and this is where I say it becomes like, so what is what is acceptable and what is not? Because it used to just be bonnets. Now it's house shoes. Now it's pajama bottoms. Is it going to be jeans next? Sneakers. You know, I think it's a slippery slope. So I think that people, black people in general, should have the freedom to choose however they want to present. Now, should they be boycotting? Because that was another thing with this topic, too. They started boycotting the the dental office and they review bombed it. Look, me personally, I wouldn't just I just wouldn't go to this establishment. That's that's just me. I, me and not saying that I wear stuff like that, but I don't want to be in an environment that look that seems elitist because then it's like then it then it then there's other politics that you got to go through i i just i just wouldn't go to this establishment i don't think that people should be review bombing it and i don't think that people should be uh trying to boycott it this is a black owned business shout out to them i'm not gonna be I, i'm not gonna partake in the business i'm not gonna no I, but y'all do you and keep it moving i think two things could be true at the same time yeah, it's always something, child. <laughs> it's always something. But that's it for this episode, child. We are done for the day. Okay, it's the 2.52. I can get my lunch. Yeah. Get my lunch and watch a movie. I can't do nothing, though, because I got to edit this podcast. <laughs> but I'll see you guys on Saturday for the next uh, or the Saturday show. So. Hope you enjoyed it. Please be sure to like this video if you're on. We are on YouTube music. So for my YouTube listeners, y'all can watch the video without being on your phone. Like it's it's like a um there's an app now for YouTube music and you can listen to my podcast on there. So yeah. See y'all later. <laughs>